very much. Thanks so much for the invitation to share um, some of my work with you all. Um, when I was invited to, to speak in this conference, um, and I asked Thomas like, what to talk about, um, well, basically he told me that, well, show us some papers you are working on and emphasizing on the methodology. Of course, the common thread um, should be the space. PowerPoint. Why should I be? No, I'm here. Why should I be there? But we, we should see the our the stores some of here online store of here PowerPoint now. They see they see behind you, so maybe you maybe you should move from there. <laughs> um. So that's exactly what Thomas said. Well, show us part of your work or some piece of work that you, you know, you want to show us because you think it's relevant, and it has to be about interactions of people within space. So I gave it a bit of thought, and uh, this topic, immigrants' concentration across the space, is one of my favorite topics. Um, it's one of my favorite topics because of this. If you just represent at European level, at NUTS level, uh, the share of foreign born population in each European region, you have a map like this one. And you say, well, uh, that's quite understandable. That's why quite rational a pattern of concentration. Big cities, Mediterranean. Uh, countries, Mediterranean provinces, sorry, then the case, the stunning case of Ireland, then Ile de France, north of, north, of, um, north of Italy. Well, it's really rational, to be honest. Um, if you think a little bit more about this, you realize that each of these regions contain a large city. Uh, but because we are working at regional level, because the data, the comprehensive data that we usually have is at NATS. Uh, two, and in the best of the cases, that's three level. This is the only picture that we have if we want, if we want to analyze this um, phenomenon, which is really recent as well because immigration has been growing for the last decades in, in, in Europe, especially in Southern Europe, which is the novelty. If you just stop at this level of a spatial um, unit of analysis, you're missing lots of the picture because given the data availability at municipal level at Lao Tzu level, you can build up, I have to say that with lots of work, a map like this at Lao Tzu level, homogenizing the series um, and focusing obviously in the years where censuses, where population censuses were released, and only the few countries in the few European countries where data is available, so restrictions, restrictions, restrictions. We want to go deeper in space and we find problems everywhere. Suddenly countries disappear. What's all this area in Europe? I thought, I thought that Europe was bigger, you know? Where are all these countries, you know, that belong to the European Union? Well, they vanish. You try to go deeper in, in space, because it's necessary, because you want to analyze cities, you want to know what's the relationship between the cities and the peripheral areas around the city, or you want to analyze the rural uh, urban dichotomy, and so you want to go deeper, NUTS 3, NUTS 2 is not enough, and you find strong data restrictions. But when you, with lots of effort, put together all this data, and you realize that there's this immigration concentration phenomenon it's not that simple as it seemed at the beginning, because there are some regions um, that before, when working at NATS level, seem to be concentrating loads of immigrants. But then, when we go in, we're going at local level, we find that within those regions, some areas are not attracting immigration at all. Rural areas, peripheral areas within those regions, and vice versa, regions that uh, according to the NATS region data, were not very attractive for immigrant population, you find out little spots, little islands, little niches where there's immigrant population concentrating. Uh, your initial thought is, ah, for sure, those are the towns, the big cities, that's where they are concentrated. Well, that is a very, very first initial good thought, but it has to be tested. Where are immigrants locating? We need to go deeper using another type of um, 
um, spatial unit of analysis, but suddenly the complexity is going to be much stronger. So, oh my God, collecting the data. Because, yeah, if we're talking about the determinants, what makes those immigrants going to those places? Places, places, not regions. Places, we change the emphasis. Ah, we also need data on other socioeconomic variables also at that level. It's not just showing the map, map of concentration of immigrants. Off you go. Population is really easy to get data on population. But what about, what about data on employment rates or unemployment rates or aging population or many others, but especially one income? What about data on income or any proxy of income, level of welfare, level of wealth at local level? That simply don't exist. And we know we are economists, well, at least I am, and we know that income is going to explain like a lot, apart from labor conditions on the local markets, for which we tend to have data. At least a proxy of the employment rate, a proxy of the unemployment rate, even at cases. Well, and why is suddenly this, this topic of my interest? Well, because if you observe the map, uh, the Location patterns for immigrant population at local level, if you contrast it with the patterns of location of national population, are more or less the same. So how long immigration was going to be the answer for the population, immigration was going to be the answer for aging, was going to be the answer for pensions, for so many other things. I don't want to be political, I'm just talking about facts. And suddenly we observe that the way immigrants are locating, they are not solving the problem. On the contrary, they are putting more pressure on the imbalances that already exist if we talk about the concentration of population, just nationals. Why? Because immigrants follow the same rationale. What makes a Portuguese going from one area to the other could be, has to be tested, could be the same reasons why Immigrants, when they come to Portugal, they decide to set, settle down in one place and not the other. Do they behave in any different way? We need to know what makes one place more attractive than the other. Why? Because in case we want to do something about it, in case we want to do something about it, we need to know what factors are attracting them, what factors are repelling them, because just affecting those factors, if we can, we can make places more attractive for immigrants or not, or at least we know that immigrants are not going to be the answer for rural areas, populated areas, or whatever. Motivation has been um, described, and now I'm explaining to you about um, the data. Um, income is going to be a very relevant variable. Income is not available at local, at local uh, level. We can have, can have data on the big problems, demographic issues that we have at the moment. Aging population, so percentage of population over 65 at local level, we have data on that. Depression, yes, we can have figures on population growth at local level. Labor shortages, well, the proxy we can use employment or unemployment rates. And you could go on and tell me, and what about housing? Housing, we have, don't have data at local level. And you could go on and tell me, and what about amenities? Amenities are so important. Can you imagine building up a database after defining what amenities are at local level on what amenities are available in each municipality of Portugal? Bars, restaurants, cultural uh, places, theaters, cinemas, uh, natural uh, parks, you name it. That is an outstanding, incredible piece of work that should be done in future, but the effort should be put into the European Union to be uh, interested in collecting this type of data. But let's go before that step on the amenities. Let's just focus on these really economic, socioeconomic variables. We don't have them at European level. We don't have them at European level. We managed to collect them with a big effort thanks to a project that you can see there on the bottom called Imagine a Project, European funds. And we managed to collect all that data. And thanks to the collection of that data at local level, 
and the estimation of figures on poverty at local level plus figures at income level that are available for researchers and for the countries where it was possible to estimate them. Thanks to that, we could ask ourselves those type of questions that I'm just describing to you right now. So I thought about this question and I said, well, listen, I have two papers written on the topic. One at the beginning of the Imagine project, which is the one that was published in 2019, and another one that has just been um, approved, not published, um, in 2021. Both papers try to answer to the same question. Both papers are focusing on the importance of going local. Uh, one paper is just on Spain, the one for 2019, and uses as the unit of analysis not the municipalities, the local labour markets or the travel to work areas. That is a very interesting exercise and there's lots of work going on right now at the moment, although for example in the UK it has, they have been used for a long time, because basically the use of these uh, spatial units avoids lots of problems uh, like, for example, oh, the attraction of the city, you know, is what att what's attracting the immigrants is this, the city, but not the surrounding areas. So that's it. You create areas that comprise the city plus the surrounding areas, a local labor market, defined through an algorithm. It's not something that you do randomly, you know, drawing uh, the way you like. Well, the first paper uh, has been written only using local data, local labor markets for Spain answering the same question, and using as a methodology, geographically weighted regressions. The second paper, it covers Spain, France, and Italy, local level data. So the data set is incredible, the computer was going crazy, so we could not use the same methodology as in the paper for Spain. We would need a supercomputer, because geographically weighted regressions take into account space. It's an economic, econometric, spatial econometric technique. More complex than the typical Darby model, spatial dependence model, because it considers also the heterogeneity in the space. Yeah? So it considers a bandwidth that you estimate and you say, until that moment, that's where the variables are spatially linked. Complex methodology. So we just have to focus on Spain. Paper on the right, trade-off. We cover Spain, we cover France, we cover Italy. We use municipal data, uh, but the methodology used is much more simple. It's a fractional profit model. Estimated for the three countries, but because we use the same um, model for the three countries, results are comparable, which is the beauty of it. There's always a trade-off covering space or complexity of the methodology. Well, at least that's my point of view. Well, here you have the explanation of the methodology for both papers. The one on the, your left, geographically weighted regressions. You have one parameter for each estimation and its dependent variable. It takes into account the special heterogeneity across the space. And usually when you estimate this model, which is really complex to estimate with spatial econometrics, you do the comparison of what you could obtain if estimating with OLS, what you get when you estimate using geographically weighted regressions. And the differences are very important because they are telling you that one estimate for one, para one parameter, for one variable, for the full country, doesn't work. That there's a special variance, a special heterogeneity. Therefore, you should be treating places in a different way. Therefore, you need to know, even if the sign changes of one determinant, that happens. Suddenly, one determinant explaining the immigrants' concentration in one place is positive, and in another side of the country, it's negative. And significant in both cases. That is the beauty of this methodology. Fractional profit model, much, much more simple, but you cover much more space. Uh, results are comparable, much more simple to interpret because they are an elasticity. You put um, a condition satisfying that the parameters are between zero and one, right? 
fine. What do we get? Is immigrant concentrating the way we would expect to solve our demographic issues? Variables. Variables that are considered in both models. First, group of variables, socioeconomic and demographic variables. Because the paper on the left was written, well, published in 2019, but, you know, start working on, a, on an article like two years in advance or something like that. At that moment, in the Magine project, we still don't have, didn't have the estimations for income and for the um, at risk of poverty, at risk of poverty estimations that are OPE index, yeah? Poverty. So those, oh, already? Well, those two variables, we didn't have them in that article and were not included in the model. Oh my God, when you're a speaker, it, time runs much faster than when you're a discussion. Socioeconomic, socioeconomic variables, more or less the same on both papers, but we didn't have income and poverty at local level in 2019, which is, we have it, which we have now in these other estimations for France, Italy, and Spain. Then we have new economic geography variables, size and distance matters. And then we have some other geographical variables like the distance to the sea, rain, temperature, weather conditions, much more detail in one paper than in the other. But more or less, the three groups of variables are kept in both, in both papers. Fine, first hypothesis that we had. Yeah, well, immigration is gonna sort out our labor shortages. Do you know what? That depending on the methodology, data set, special unit of analysis that we were using, and countries that we were covering, in one case we were saying, oh yeah, we could say, we write a paper, lovely result. Yeah, they are covering like, you know, they tend to go to places where, um, where employment rates are high or unemployment rates are, are low. Well, it depends on the methodology you use, the country, and the data set that you're using and the special unit of analysis, here you have it, the summary, you see the crosses or whatever, the result that you will get in case you could be focusing on one country, one methodology, one data set. I'm just contradicting myself in different articles, right? And that's, that's great, yeah? <laughs> so the second, not a hypothesis, the second will, it will be a will. Oh, immigra immigrants are going to concentrate in those areas that are depopulating, yeah? That, that would be our wish. Well, so, in the first paper, um, it is proof in some a that some areas, some cities are still concentrating immigrants, so it would be the immigrants would put more pressure into the already populated cities, while in some other cities, because remember, we have different values for different, ci different cities, in some other Spanish cities, you know, there would be still room, no, no, that hypothesis wouldn't be confirmed. Using the more simple approach, but covering uh, France, Italy, and Spain, we observe for this uh, result, for the depopulation issue, plus also the next one coming, that Italy and Spain tend to have the similar behavior, and France goes in another direction. So, in France, population seems to be concentrating in those areas where it would be needed. Do you know what's behind there? This is my personal thought, that population, uh, immigrant population in Italy and in France is a recent phenomenon. And in France, they have had decades to relocate. And as we are working with foreign-born population mm -hmm. figures, without differentiating, because it's impossible, if they have been there for 10 years, 20 years, or 30 years, because that would be going for individual data, which is not available, yeah? We're working at local level. I have the feeling that behind that behavior is resettlements of immigrants. But this is just my hypothesis that could be tested, contrasted, in future papers, maybe, or if the European Union manages to get that is incredible individual database that I would be claiming, yeah? Third hypothesis, or third, third wish. A, that immigration population or oh, it's just concentrating in those areas where we have the aging problem. Well, in the first, in the first uh, paper was not tested, that variable was not included, and look in the other paper for Spain and for Italy, no, they are not concentrating in those areas. They are not gonna solve our aging issues, but in France, yeah, yeah, they would. We could say that they could be the answer. Fine, final thoughts. Nobody had to scold me. 
but thanks for letting me know. Um, we have to study what factors are attracting uh, immigrant population. We have a lot of hope on immigrant population to the different places. Places, not regions. If we really want to study this in detail, we, we need really comprehensive, big, large data sets which do not exist at European level. Those series, those databases should be homogenized, hard work. We only have so far censuses released every 10 years. I'm really looking forward to the one in 2021, but as you know, uh, now it's, gonna, it's not going to be as exhaustive as the previous ones. It's going to be a, just a register. So we are going backwards in some sense. If we are betting for going local, and um, we really believe what the European Union is saying, oh, place-based policies, or oh, policies a la carte, nothing of common policy for everybody, café para todos, we say in Spanish. No, no, has to be designed specifically for this region. We would need to have proper data sets, proper databases. Like in Finland, Sweden, Norway, Denmark, that, and the Netherlands, exactly, where you have information at individual le level, even geo-reference data on where you live, what side of the street, so you can make beautiful papers on a, a neighborhood segregation on the side of the street that you live, the location of where you work, your income, your everything, your life. A big, a big brother, I have to say. But um, that, we should be taking it seriously. I mean, if we want to do this type of uh, policies a la carte and we have to, we, we want to learn about what's going on at local level, the European Union should kind of accompany its words with actions in databases. Maybe my colleagues agree with me or yes. no? Yes? <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. You see?